Welcome everybody to the Hound's Tales podcast. This is your home for field trialing and deer dog hunting. It'll be stories and discussions on the world of dog hunting. So let's drop the gate, cast your hounds, and get ready for another episode of the Hound's Tales podcast. When it's time to get ready for a field trial, deer season, or any other reason that you need to load up that dog box, and you're in need of dog hunting supplies, look no further than Outdoor Dog Supply. Outdoor Dog Supply is the leader in online Garmin sales as well as the leader in Garmin and Tritronics trade-in programs. From GPS system to dog training aids to vitamins and supplements and everything in between, put your trust in Outdoor Dog Supply. Super fast delivery, superior customer service, and a dedication to our sport. We are proud to partner with Outdoor Dog Supply and can't thank them enough for everything that they do for our sport. Visit their website today at OutdoorDogSupply.com or shoot them a call at 757-482-1000 for any of your hound hunting needs. Thank you, Outdoor Dog Supply. Welcome everybody to the Hound's Tales podcast. On this episode, we're going to be short and sweet. Uh, I do apologize again for no guest. Um, I have been so busy, guys. Uh, it's a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, I do apologize. I've had a few scheduling conflicts on trying to get some guests on. Um, and it's been it's been real tough. It's been real tight trying to get some guys on. But good news, I do have a recording lined up for tomorrow as you're listening to this one on the 14th of August in 2024. Hopefully, maybe a few years down the road, some people are still listening to this thing. But uh, it does look like we got a good, uh, good one coming. Uh, I'm not going to give it away, but um, uh, definitely a, uh, a name being made in this sport. Um, he's had a heck of a run here in the past couple of years. And I uh, can't wait to, to get him on. It's definitely one I think a lot of people have been uh, looking for to, to come on here and, and talk. So uh, that one is getting recorded. I got some uh, Hall of Famers that are lined up. Uh, some more great, great guests, guys. So y'all just be patient with me. I do apologize again. Um, I promise we'll get back to some more guest episodes. Um, but on this one, we're going to be short and sweet tonight. Um, I'm very... Um, sleep deprived tonight so y'all bear with me a little bit uh, while i'm recording uh we are uh <laughs> we are trying still to break my uh two-year-old of passies so that has been a challenge and a half at night time uh, he was used to sleeping with a passy and the past few weeks we have been breaking him of that uh he's doing pretty good but uh he still kind of struggles every now and then and it's not fair to put that all on mama so uh we are tackling that together and tag teaming and doing the best we can with that so that's kind of put me in a little bit of a bind uh, as far as doing everything for that but i think everybody kind of understands you know family first so you know before we get started into the guts of this episode uh, like i said it's going to be short and sweet i do have something i want to tease everybody with uh, as far as my pen hunting guys go um you know, this year we've done the Virginia Pen Series. We are three hunts in. Uh, we've got a nice little break in between the uh, last half of the, the series. Uh, we got uh, Wickham's coming up here soon. The very following weekend, we go straight to Billy Pools, and then we got about a month break, and the championship hunt gets decided, and we get to crown our first Virginia Pen Series champion. Unfortunately, no. Uh, I know a lot of people have asked. We cannot make a CH this year doing that. But, but, that leads into what my plan is for next year. So, guys, before I kind of get started telling you about next year, please understand the logistics behind all this are not 100% set in stone. Um, I've got a lot of green lights on pins. I've got green lights on the main idea behind doing all this. Um, and I will continue to update as much as I can the more we get information. But because I've been kind of slack, I wasn't going to do it this early um, before I really got it started. But I wanted to give you all a little teaser for next year. So the goal for next year's 
uh, the Hound's Tales pin series, notice how I said that, is crowning a champion at the end of the series. That's right. We're going to be able to put a CH in front of the name. Um, I know I've got the green light from one organization to do that. Um, I'm waiting on the okay from the other, and I'll explain why. Um, again, still working on logistics, but I really want some feedback on this too, guys. I want to know if this is something that I do go through with, it does work out, that I do have y'all's backing. I think it's, I think it sounds cool to me. I would be, if, if I was on the outside looking in, I would be all about it and I'd be chasing this thing, but I kind of want to know what everybody thinks. So next year, it's going to be same premise we'll have five qualifier hunts and then championship hunt the five qualifier hunts are going to be spread out amongst it looks like up to three states that's right not just virginia that's why i said hound's tails pin series not virginia pin series i am looking to expand it i know that I can definitely do two states and toying with the idea of a third state. Um, I, that's going to be really tough, but I think it opens up um, a broader spectrum. Um, and of course, that would be, you know, God, uh, sorry about my deep south guys. Uh, I, can't, I can't quite, uh, I, I don't quite have my, my ducks in a row to make it go that far yet, but maybe in the next couple of years, maybe I'll get that squared away and maybe we can try something different but as of right now it looks like and i'm going to be very uh put a lot of emphasis let me rephrase that put a lot of emphasis on the looks likes and uh for right nows and my plan is those kind of uh, phrases i just i don't want nobody to think that this is a hundred percent set in stone this is just the idea of where I want it to go. But it, right now, it looks like we are going to be in Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Uh, it will still be the same idea. Top 20 from each qualifier will be eligible for the championship. Something that I do plan on doing next year a little different is it's going to be on a per-person basis, not a per-kennel basis. Um, the dogs, when, they, when you register them, they must be yours and yours alone. Uh, register them under I don't care you know if if you are coming and you register under your kennel register under your kennel um, no swapping no bringing your buddy's dogs none of that you know if your buddy wants to get numbers I haven't quite figured out how I want to do numbers yet and I'll explain more of that here in just a minute but um, no bringing your buddy's dogs your buddy has to get your own number your kennel partner has to get your own his own numbers um, uh, it'll make more sense. I promise. Um, something that I'm also toying with is implementing you're only eligible to come to two qualifiers. Maybe three. I may push it to three. I um, haven't 100% decided on it yet, that yet. But um, the idea is sticking with the two pins. That opens it up. I had a pile of people that never got numbers. Um, you know, I, I, I am deeply, deeply sorry for that. My, my goal is with this series and with the idea behind it, I don't know if it's going to make sense. You know, it kind of made more sense to do it with the one day hunts. Hint, hint. But, uh, <laughs> but I would love to see everybody that wants a chance to get numbers to get numbers i'm trying to come up with an idea with a system to make that work how am i going to do it i don't know yet um i'm toying with a lot of ideas um but in due time i will get that too so now here's the fun part got your five qualifiers done three states all different pins same same ideas not ever in this that my goal in every time i do this series is to never visit the same pen more than once 
never visit the same pen more than once. And man, these pens, guys, uh, if any of the pen owners are listening that I've contacted, the guys that have run, you know, I've run at this year, running at this year, I cannot thank y'all enough for being so open to this idea and making this work. Um, it, it really means the world to me. Um, and y'all are truly a blessing. Uh, I still say pen owners um, are the most uh, un, unrecognized heroes of this sport. But anyway, uh, I'm rambling there. Um, so I, I think we have the location set, so I'm not going to jump the gun and announce those prematurely, but it looks like the championship hunt is going to be a three day, three pin. Yes, you did hear me correctly. Three day, three pin, three completely different pins, three days in a row crown a champion at the end of them it will be two coyote pins and a fox pin 100 dogs will start 25 dog cut each day i believe we have it worked out to to make that happen guys um i know that sounds crazy um the pins are close enough to each other to make it make sense um I really think this is this. I I, I think it's cool. Uh, again, I want to hear feedback. I want to know what y'all think. Um, again, I still have a lot, a lot, a lot of planning and organizing and uh, logistics behind all this to make this work. Um, but it does appear that as far as that goes i at least have that worked out um i'm going to try to get it that official you know somewhere down the lines here but you know a lot of pens don't start booking officially until january but um i am working on as much as i possibly can um but that is the idea. A three-day, three-pin, two coyote pins, and a fox pin. That way us Virginia boys ain't left out. The coyote, the, your, your North Carolina, South Carolina guys that don't know how to run a fox. Just kidding, guys. Just kidding. Don't, don't, don't shoot me. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, that way it takes a rounded dog. Um, not only do you have to, one, go to a one-day hunt and qualify, then you have to come you have to have a dog that's strong enough to not only qualify at that one day, then you have to go to a three day at three different pens that are going to be boil fest, boil fest, known to be boil fest. The number should be stupid. And you have to run both types of game. Uh, again, I'm not going to give it away. I'm not going to give too much away, but, um, by the end of it, we will be able to do a big cash payout at the end. Um, that is the idea behind it. I toyed with the idea of making it for a side-by-side. Um, but I, I love the idea of giving away to more than just first place. So, um, again, I have a lot of logistics behind this. Um, I'm thinking thinking again a lot of logistics a lot of ideas going on here i'm going to try to kind of try to see where everybody's heads at it with this um i love feedback guys um and anybody that's listening to it please shoot me a message that if you think that you it's something you sound like you want to attend i'd love to hear um you know this year i kept it real cheap um did 50 dollars a dog um next year i'm toying with the idea of going up I'm toying with the idea of going up to $100 a dog. But at the end of the championship, I'll be able to give back. I th- if I did the quick math behind it, and I think I mathed it all, all out right, you're looking at about eight to $10,000 to win the championship. Not only do you get to crown a champion at a three-day three-pin, get a CH beside your name, but it appears, appears – that the first place dog could be getting anywhere some of that seventy five hundred to ten thousand dollars. Um, again, I still have a lot of work to do behind that. I've got a lot of math to do behind all that, but that is my goal to give a big cash payout for first, you know, and then slowly do it, drop it down 
to where at least first through tenth gets a pretty decent little payday. Um, make it worth it. It's a lot of. I know a three day three pin sounds crazy. It's a it's something that doesn't get done a lot. It's not this is not a first of its kind. I know that, um, but. I think the idea is cool. I've always thought it would be cool to do one. It's always become the fun to go to one. Um, but that is the idea. Five qualifiers. Um, and, yes, I know probably some guys listening are like, how can you hold a three-day and make a champion if you are have to be qualified for it? I've already talked to one organization about it, and they have agreed to it. Um, I'm waiting on an answer from the second one. Um, so I do know for a fact that – a champion can be made with this idea. It's just getting it all together and making it happen. But, all right, I'm going to quit talking about it because I'm going to spill something I don't need to spill um, uh, prematurely. So, guys, uh, let me know. I really, really, really want to know what y'all's ideas behind this are. Um, I'd like to know if this is something – that we should be keeping it cheap to entries. Um, you know, I, I know, and, and when I, when I, when you give me your opinion guys and I go the opposite direction, um, don't feel like I was against you guys. Um, I'm taking as much input as I can from as many people as I can and trying to gather a common consensus across the board. Um, and I'm just going to go with the more popular uh, opinion on that. So you, uh, I just want to know, you know, thoughts so that's the uh houndstails pin series for next year uh so we will we will see where that goes can't wait to finish it up this year um all my great sponsors um man i can go through the whole list but we will can we will keep that uh keep that for the the pin series post and then those kind of things so um really looking forward to the rest of this year next year sounds like it's going to be a nut nut case to do but um i think everybody really enjoy it so all right let's get into the meat and potatoes of this one guys um and i know nobody likes to be preached at um that's not what i'm trying to do here but it also is what i'm trying to do here um i've noticed a couple things that's really kind of bothered me here lately and i thought this would be a great time to kind of take a second and and express some concerns and consp- ex- excuse me, express some ideas behind this thing. Um, before we get into this, um, I want to go ahead, uh, since it's going to be so short and sweet, y'all bear with me. Um, I want to run my sponsor ads real quick, guys. Um, I could not do this without these sponsors. There's a lot of great companies that are behind the Hound's Tales podcast and behind the hound, hound hunting community, guys. Um, I'm going to run these guys through real quick. I'm going to do it all in one big jump. So um, y'all bear with me. Uh, I know it'll be about two minutes, two and a half minutes of ads straight in a row. But guys, uh, y'all just uh, bear with me. These guys uh, really do do a lot for us, do a lot for me. And um, I I just, I can't thank them enough. So we're going to roll into that right now and then we'll get on this topic. The Houndstails Podcast is proud to partner with Cajun Lights, who have jumped on board to support the field trialing community. Do you have nighttime field trials? Pleasure running at night? When you need to catch that next crossing at night, put your trust in Cajun Lights. Cajun Lights is a Made in America product out of North Carolina who has been in business for over 25 years. These are cap style and bucket hat headlamps to free up that extra hand for your voice recorder or your GPS. Whether it's the Cajun Micro Gator for those late night feeds, the cost-efficient Cajun Bayou for pleasure running, or the top-level Cajun Blinder for field trials. Never miss a thing with these amazing lights. All the lights come with a two-year warranty and a lifetime labor warranty. These guys are excited to get into our sport, ladies and gentlemen, so be sure if you see me at Hunt, come ask me about them. I'll have one of each style on hand ready to show you. You can visit their website at CajunLights.com, and their phone number is 888-773-3080. Thank you, Cajun Lights, for coming on board with the House Tales podcast. Now, let's get back to the show. We're going to 
going to take a quick second here and interrupt this episode and let you all know about our friends over at Southern Hound Hunting Magazine. Do you enjoy reading stories from houndsmen across the country? Diving into real life experiences out there in the woods with working hounds of every kind. Deer dogging, bear dogging, hog dogging, small game dogging, you name it, the Southern Hound Hunting Magazine has it. And it's bringing it to you page after page while also spreading a positive image of this beautiful sport that we all love. Be sure to sign up today and for just 15 bucks a year, you can have quarterly magazines filled with nothing but dog hunting sent right to your door. Check them out today at southernhoundhunting.com and get in the hunt. Let's get back to the episode. All right, guys, welcome back. Thank you for bearing with me on that. Um, big shout out to all my sponsors. Uh, y'all are amazing, guys. Uh, so, uh, the the saving the sport. This is not just Virginia I'm talking here. Uh, I know I have a lot of listeners all over the country, and for one, I cannot thank y'all enough for that. Um, it's, it truly is amazing. We're creeping up on 50,000 downloads. We're almost at 500 uh, subscribers. Um, I just, man, I, it's, it's, it's truly overwhelming. It really is. Uh, never when I picked this thing back up that I thought it was going to get to this point, and yet here we are less than a year later. Uh, actually creeping up on a year anniversary, uh, believe it or not, so... Uh, saving the sport guys um, I'm going to talk a little close to home right now uh, just because that's the one I know the most about um, working a full time job uh, side hustles um, kids, wife, family, dogs uh, it makes it hard to uh, be knowledgeable about all the other states but I, I down the road I will get there but Virginia is the one I know the best um, I want to talk about Colorado here in a little bit uh, the little bit that I do know, um, but Virginia right now, the DWR is trying to pass a regulation against deer and bear dogs specifically being on someone else's land or quote unquote trespassing. Uh, it's the hound dog trespass, uh, regulation. Um, they plan on making it a misdemeanor after a certain number. It's a, it's a whole, it's a whole spill on how it all plays out, but pretty much, uh, they want to make it, I, I think I got my order right, the first offense is a class three, and the last, you know, the after three strikes, it's a class one misdemeanor. Um, I mean, you're talking about because a dog was on somebody's land in an open leash law state, fence out state. A, a dog ended up on somebody's land that you end up with a class one misdemeanor. I mean, come on, that, that just, it doesn't even make sense. Um, you know, the DWR was supposed to, and they kind of teased it that at the next DWR meeting that was going to be held, uh, next week in August of 24, that we were going to be, uh, talking about it. Uh, they, <sighs> let me backpedal for a second for those that don't know. Um, the previous DWR meeting, they passed a bunch of regulations all of which were perfectly fine. Honestly, I think they were great. I think they need to be put in. Um, I won't go into on here just for time purposes um, what they were all for, but the there was two that were left open for public comments. Um, the one was the hound dog trespass, and the other was making GPS um, tracking collars mandatory. Um, I'm going to specifically hang to the hound dog trespass right now. Um, you know, during that public comment section, um, going into the last week, I think it was 200 and something comments, if I rem if I remember right. Um, and then we had a heck of a rally in the last week, and we got up to 1,220 comments made on the hound dog trespass regulation alone. Of those 1,220 uh, 1220 comments, 1,173 of those were opposed to the hound dog trespass regulation, as in, in favor of us, you know, the houndsman. That was 1,173 pro dog hunting comments on there. Um, the DWR was supposed to, at this next meeting, go over that. Now they have released that they will not be going over that. Could that be good news? Yes. Could that be them trying to get sneaky and keep people away? Um, yeah, that could be that too. We don't know all the ins and outs. 
but keep paying attention. Um, here's where my this is where my quarrel is, and I don't know if, and this is what I'd really like to know. I, I don't know if Facebook's algorithm is keeping people from seeing it. I don't know if our algorithm is seeing it. I don't know if people are seeing it and don't care. Um, I'm not tech savvy enough to be able to look at or understand why some posts get more traction than others. Uh, it just seems very odd that you know uh, certain posts that it can be made are getting thousands and thousands and thousands of views, and then I make a I'll, I'll make a a post about you know trying uh, trying to inform people about meetings, and you know 200 people see it. It just, I don't know, something's weird about it. I, I don't understand it. Um, but right now in Virginia alone, we are estimated that somewhere in the range of 90 to 100,000 houndsmen are in Virginia right now. So if you put that into perspective, uh, we'll go on the shallow end uh, of 90,000 houndsmen. 1,173. That's less than, what, 2 3%? of the population of Houndsman Estate took 30 seconds of their time to voice their opinion on the public comment section that was open for a month? Come on, guys. We got to do better. We have to do better. Um, again, I, I, I'm not, I hate preaching. I hate listening to people beat dead horses, but that dead horse right now is the one that's trying to keep you able to cast dogs out of, out of the back of your truck. If you want your kids, your grandkids, their grandkids to be able to do this, we got to do better. Um, right now, Colorado is going through the ringer uh, on mountain lion hunting and big cat hunting and big game hunting and stuff like that. I don't know all the ins and outs, but I do know it's a major fight that they're going through right now to try to keep the sport alive. Um you know, I know it's a big initiative. The Houndsman XP is doing a heck of a job promoting for that and doing their, their part to try to help keep that alive. Um, I, I wish, I don't think my my fan base, um, oh, that sounds very cocky the way I said that. I do apologize for that. Um, I don't think the, the, the group that I reach, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, like I said, I don't even know a lot about it. I know what's going on, but I don't know enough about it to talk on it so um but we have these fights that are going on all over the country guys you know i don't know what south carolina is going through i don't know what um you know uh louisiana is going through i you know i don't know wherever you know i don't know where any of these states are going through just because i don't have time to keep up with it i really i really hate that but what i am telling you in your state in your state, I don't care if you're South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, freaking wherever, Colorado, if you're listening and you sit down and think about it and you love casting dogs out the back of a truck, going to a field trial, uh, taking a friend dog hunting with you, and you sit there and look back and you're like, man, I've never, I've never been to a DWR meeting. I've never joined a dog hunt alliance i've never joined a hunting dog association um, i don't know anything about the laws that are in our state um guys i i know that we all just want to feed our dogs train our dogs hunt hard nobody wants to make this about politics or money or drama um we all just want to have our dogs love our dogs love what we do enjoy ourselves have a good time you know sit around and tell campfire stories after a long hard day get up and go do it again the next day you know i know that's what we all want to do but unfortunately the world that we live in we live in a growing world um developing world where it's getting harder and harder and harder to do this and if we don't get involved if we don't make something about this a money deal if we don't make something about this political i, I don't want to either um 
I don't like the idea of making dog hunting and thinking about that it's taking money to keep dog hunting alive. But guess what? It is. It is. I don't care if you're talking about the fox pens, coyote pens, deer hunting woods, coyote, you know, mountain lions hunting, whatever. Um, it takes participation, donations, and money and I'm trying not to sound like a preacher when I say that you know uh, not to get religious but the one thing I hate about going to you know if you go to a church you know and I'm not I'm, I'm Christian I, I go to church and all that kind of stuff but I cannot stand when a preacher begs for money and that's that's not the image that I want to see right now for the houndsman and I don't want to be that 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 image but Guys, you know, if you have, like Virginia, we have the Virginia Hunting Dog Alliance. They do a lot for us, and practice. they've practically saved our booties for years and years and years and kept it to where, you know, there's other great organizations, too, in Virginia. They have the Sport and Dog Co Coalition, you know, all those. And all those do great. They all team up together, do great jobs. But no matter which one you want to support and what organization you want to get behind, no matter what state you're in, Get behind one that's doing the most for y'all. Do your research. Make sure they're legit. And support them. If they have fundraisers, uh, you know, try your best. I know money's tight, you know. Bidenomics is hard on everybody right now. Um, six figures ain't what six figures used to be. Um, but, guys, if you can, you I mean, $10 a person. You I mean, think about that. I think about that in Virginia. You know, ten dollars a person at ninety, you know, ninety thousand people. You know, do the math. That's a lot of freaking money. It's a lot of money. You know, uh, guys. Uh, um, and, and and not even just the the, not even just the money part of it. Um, you know, participation. Um, you know, what, what do we need to do to get more people involved? That's, you know, as, as someone that is trying to rally the troops every week, every day, uh, trying to find new ways, trying to get new ideas behind people, what do we have to do to get people involved? I'm, I'm scratching my head behind this, and don't get me wrong, you know, I was... It took me a while to get involved, and when I did, you know, I went ahead and jumped in. And, and I'm not saying that, you know, when you get involved that you have to be this, uh, show up at every DWR meeting, take all the time off of work, and give 10% of your earnings to dog hunters. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, don't take that wrong. But even becoming a little bit involved, and every county needs a leader, um, but even just a little bit of involvement, uh, even if it's something as simple as you see something on social media that's supporting dog hunting, that's positive towards the hound hunting community, share it, uh, join it, post it, you know, whatever, like it. Uh, more clicks, more better. Get that algorithm up. Um, just do, help do your part without having to spend a, a dime, you know, take two seconds of your time and share a post, um, that's promoting ethical dog hunting. Um, if, you know, um, you know, even beyond that, when you, when you start looking at a hunting dog alliance chapter or, um, or any kind of hunting dog association that is in your state, um, look for your county, see if there's a chapter going, if there is, and it's dormant, then, un, you know, get it get it alive again um do whatever you gotta do you know somebody needs to step up in every county and have a chapter of whatever organization that you can be a part of and get it going get that get that going i know it's tough man um i know it's hard to get people to show up to meetings and i don't understand why um i really don't uh, especially when it, you have ones that are trying to keep you informed as much as possible and taking all the hard work out of it, and all you have to do is show up to a meeting once every couple months. I don't know, guys, man. We need more players and leaders in the fight all over the country. 
Um, the fight has just become, it's more than just owning hounds and having a good time. There are evil people that are out there that want to see it end and, and never have a, a hound chase another piece of game in their entire life. That's, they would rather see a, 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 a dog that was prime tuned up, fed, healthy, doing what it loves to do, bred to do, I mean, gets excited to go do, it ain't hurting nobody. They would rather see that dog be against the law to use it for what it loves to do and have to be a couch potato and die of freaking obesity and diabetes than it be out there going across somebody's land for three seconds. I don't know, guys. It's the world that we live in, and if we don't become involved, then we're going to lose it. Do you really want to look back if you lose it in your state? If you lose it in your state, do you really, really, really want to look back and say, man, I wish I would have done something while I still had the opportunity? Or do you want to look back and say, man, I, but yeah, we lost it, but... I gave every effort that I could. I did everything that I could to try to keep it around. I went to the meetings. I I, I spoke. I you know. I, I know not. That's not for everybody. I'm not trying to guilt trip people into doing that. But uh, public comment sections. Man, I wish I would have took thirty seconds of my life and wrote my opinion on there, just saying oppose. That's all it took. That's all it took. That's all it took. Less than 3% of houndsmen were, could spare 30 seconds of their life in Virginia. Less than 3%. I, I don't know what we have to do. I don't know what we have to get houndsmen to believe to see that we are fighting tooth and nail every year um, to keep this alive. Um, but... I don't know. I guess that's just the way I look at it, and I wish more people would look at it is, do you really want to look back if it does get taken from us and say, man, I wish I would have done more? Or would you rather look back and say, man, I, I, I tried so hard. I did everything I could, but at least I went down trying. I don't know. I know which one I'd rather do, but... Guys... We always brag about being a passionate group of hunters. It's time to prove it. Not just during hunting season, not just when the dogs are on the ground. All year long, any little effort helps. Guys, that's what I'm going to leave y'all with. Like I said, short, sweet. I hate being preachy, but I feel like it needed to be said. I think it was time that we talked about this um, a little bit more, kind of made a full-on episode about it, but... Uh, thank y'all for bearing with me guys um, please keep tuning in I promise you we'll have some more guests on here soon uh, I do apologize again for that keep a lookout for more upcoming uh, information um, uh, about uh, anything going on hound, hound hunting uh, deer dog hunting fox pens more specifically but uh, don't, don't um, I, I'm not afraid to expand into more um, we'll see how that kind of stuff goes but get involved Get involved, get involved, do as, you know, as much as you can, you know, whatever you can do, just try, guys. Promote and be a positive image. Be careful on social media, guys. Um, think, 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 think about it before you post it. If there's anything that you think can be used against us, I don't care if it was the cleanest shot in the world and the dogs come in behind it, if it has any evidence that it could be used against us just don't post it we live in this sick twisted world where everything has to be posted and i'm a huge advocate of pro social media for the houndsman the houndsman that sounded weird it's sound like the bears and i'm a packers fan good gosh but uh <laughs> you know if we got to be smart be smart use your head think before think before posting um, if you have not done it yet, go on your listening platform. Give us a five-star review, guys. Um, that kind of helps us get our numbers up, gets us more out there, helps us reach more people, guys. Uh, if you love what you hear, um, 
please go do that. Be sure to like and share anytime that I'm posting anything that you see that you like, guys. Share it away. Um, thank y'all so much for listening. Y'all are awesome. Uh, I cannot thank everybody enough. Guys, y'all are amazing. I promise we're going to keep doing this thing as long as I possibly can. All right, guys. Like always, join me next week, and happy hunting.